Everyone always likes to say that Toronto is the New York City of Canada. Toronto is just like New York, but without all the stuff. Well, we just got back from a five-day trip in Toronto, so we're gonna give you our breakdown on whether I think that this is true or not true. Hopefully, this video helps anybody who is thinking about visiting Toronto or wants to move there. Yeah, or it's just interesting to explore cultural differences, the pros and cons of every single place, right? Because we're all just trying to fit, Andrew, into this world, this wow. big game map, and pick the right plot of land. So make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. First off, we gotta give a huge shout out to the CCYAA Celeb Classic. Andrew, uh, we got some of the basketball highlights down below. But yeah, let's just get into it, man. Andrew, what is the big difference in attitude? Everybody always talks about there's a New York attitude. It's hyper direct. It can be very rude. People just say things to each other. Um, in Toronto, there, there's obviously a very Canadian attitude, right, of saying sorry, or depending on where you're from, Andrew, Sorry. Yeah. I mean, even before, I think every major sports game or sports event, they have to acknowledge that they are on First Nations land. In America, that would be like, before we sing the national anthem, we want to also thank all the Native American tribes like the Cherokee, the Chihuahua, the Sioux Indians, uh, because it is their original land that we are on. Yeah. I mean, they have a very different approach to ethnicity and making sure that people from diverse backgrounds get along. Andrew, Canadians do not refer to uh, ethnic food as ethnic food. They just call it like, oh, you're eating Korean food or Chinese food or Middle Eastern food. Right, right, right. Whereas in America, you know, you can hear people be like, oh, yeah, you know, ethnic food. Yeah, you know, like, we're like, the, you know, you minorities. Like, right, it's, le it's othered. I think, obviously, America has a different relationship with race wars in America. One time, Andrew, at a bar in Canada, Andrew, I heard f sorry said five times in 90 seconds. That's crazy. And people meant it, too. Yeah. They weren't just saying it like, sorry. Like, you, you know, sometimes they do, sorry. Right. Her. It wasn't well, like that. I mean, let's be honest. I think Toronto is the biggest city in Canada, but it's not, it's not really competitive. It, it's not, it doesn't got that crazy big city vibe where it's hyper, hyper competitive like New York City. Like New York City is just like everybody's trying to get somewhere and I think Toronto's just a more chilled out version. So although, you know, it does kind of feel like New York at times, I would say it almost feels like San Diego, Seattle, a little bit of uh, 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 almost like Queens. Chicago, Charlotte. Yeah, yeah more, more like a borough, more like Queens, maybe more They're, like Brooklyn. Like we or, were, uh, If you include Long Island yeah. City into Queens. And we were staying on Bloor Street, which is just like a mile up from the actual city center. And there was like a bunch of houses there for yeah. college students and for families. So there was like no houses in Manhattan. Yeah, a lot of row houses. I would say also um, it's way cleaner, way less cockroaches, and way, maybe 100 million less rats. Yeah. I don't think I saw a single rat in a week. I, I didn't see any rats on the street, man. We were out on the street. But the streets are way more wide open. It's way cleaner, way de way less dense, man. It's, it, it's, it's almost like chill. a suburban, urban vibe. It's really exactly, difficult exactly. to describe. Moving on, Andrew, just to the stores and businesses and food. These are like very obvious things that anybody, you know, it's like tier one obvious, right? Andrew, when you see a bunch of Timmy's, the Tim Hortons with the Tim Bits, when you see a bunch of Popeye's, even though there's Popeye's everywhere, there's so, I didn't even know. I was like, man. Canadians eating that much Popeyes? They love Popeyes. And they have one chain that you have zero of in New York City and just zero of almost left in America. They have a ton of A&Ws. Yeah, that's old school. And root beer floats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what uh, I would say is different is, first of all, Tim Hortons... I know a lot of Canadians hate on Tim Hortons, but I had some of their sandwiches, their beef and cheddar, and that bread, I think, is better than the equivalent bread that you would get in America. Because would you say it is from a little bit of uh, the French influence? I Maybe think from I Quebec, what? Yeah, Quebec, yeah. You Quebec, might, you might have to give them credit for the Quebec and the Montreal, man, because the, the bread is a little bit better there. Also, I would just say, like, overall, I saw more businesses that I think had more like whimsical names. Mm. I think Canada is like a little bit more lighthearted or goofy, or maybe because it's not quite a hyper, hyper competitive market. Like it's not so bent on being like cool all the time, yeah, but they'll yeah, like yeah. come up with funny well, names. It for is things. the land of Martin Short, Andrew, Mike and Myers, Jim Carrey. Drake is very funny and like almost like self effacing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, also, I noticed as far as the food scene goes, David, that uh, we'll get into the Asian food in a little bit, but when it comes to even other food, it was like not so much about it, like 
making you feel like you were in France or making you feel like you were in Italy. You know, like in New York City, you're going to be like, oh, like, oh, well, you know, we flew in like the French chef and we have French shrimp pastries and we have this. And we, oh, we, you know, we flew in this Italian chef. You know, it's like everything is supposed to be hyper, hyper authentic straight from there and give you an elevated experience. I think there's obviously some of that in, in Toronto, but they seem to be having more fun with food. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, it reminds me of an attitude that you find not in New York. You can find that attitude in America, like yeah. in the Midwest, right, right, in right. Texas. People have fun with things. Charlotte, even, North even Carolina, California, a little bit more. Even like, Chicago, even more. But there's, there's, it's, that was a big difference between like at least the biggest city that is the financial cultural hub. Um, some interestingly enough, Andrew, some chefs told me that they believe the development of Western food, specifically whether that's uh. Uh, whether they're considered new Canadian versus new American is they said it's like 10 to 15 years behind, but they believe Asian food is on par, or at least when it comes to Cantonese food in Canada, 10 years to 15 years ahead of America, mm. specifically of uh, maybe even just Cantonese food. Yeah. I mean, we shout out this one spot. We filmed that a uh, couple last year with Linda D mm -hmm. called Zoe, I think. And it was like this, Zoe, yeah. Zoe, it's this big Vietnamese restaurant that I had never even seen in America. And I'm not saying that there's a bunch of Vietnamese in Toronto, but I'm just saying this restaurant with all the LED lights, very nice build out, huge spot. Like I had never seen a Vietnamese restaurant in America built like that. Now, there's a number of reasons why possibly cost, but or but I'm just like, I don't know. Like there's certain things you see in Canada that if you're really into food, you're like, this is yeah. a little different. There's they this remind spot. me more of like Houston almost. Yeah. There was this spot called So Famous that we walked into. It's just this little Chinese spot where you can buy like fresh stir fried, but it's like newly redone and it's clearly done by like a second generation guy. But then like it's just one chef on a walk, and they were so nice because I was just joking and said, hey, hey, I, I could I could chef something on the walk, too. And then literally, the old Canto chef was like, okay, come over here and show me. Yeah, he was like, this guy talking a big game, yeah. you know, I got to test out his skills. And then I went in the back of the kitchen, and he almost let me cook on the hot walk. You know, luckily, I didn't burn myself because yeah, yeah. I don't know how to use it. I would say a lot of things, to me, the easiest way to describe it, and, you know, you guys can tell me if I'm right or wrong. I think I'm right are orientated for the middle, middle to upper middle class. I think a lot of things in New York are actually orientated for maybe either uh, almost like lower class or like ultra wealthy. Yeah. So the, the, especially in New York City, there's not a huge amount of things that cater to the middle. Maybe exactly. more in Queens, you do see things that uh -huh. cater in the middle. But as far as Manhattan goes, very, very high low. I, I like what you're saying because New York's food scene, I would say, is generally known for its cheap eats, right? As we know, the bodega, everything the cheap Chinatown eats. Uh, very famous for that. And then also famous for its like top end, like world famous, world renowned, like super hyper high end Michelin star, one Madison Park restaurants. Like that's what also New York is known for. But that middle part, people don't talk about it as much. But right, I think right, right. in Canada- Because people are trying to have a crazy $10 chopped yeah. cheese or like a $500 yeah. omakase in New York. You know right? what it is in New York? It's like- all the high end stuff is for the middle class people to experience once in a while. But other than that, they're like eating everything else. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, what do you think of the architecture? I, I noticed that they, they take a lot less risks with architecture in Toronto. A lot of the businesses, they look like glass, essentially just glass boxes with balconies. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that the architecture is something that I would say Toronto has better of. I think New York has way more diverse architecture. I think that the architects, when they think about building a building, they want to build it super crazy and like, you know, all... Oh, and by the way, Andrew, one time when we went to Toronto last year, we Airbnb'd, un like, not intentionally, in the infamous ICE building. Yeah, don't don't Airbnb. Yeah, there. do just, not Airbnb. I'm just there. going ahead and say, just don't do that one. But all right, David, getting to the Asian food scene because obviously that's one that a lot of our fans are thinking about because we were in it. Right, right, right. I mean, obviously, when we are going to Toronto or even when we're here in New York, that's more of the scene that we are 10 out of 10 experts in. I can't David, tell David, you that I'm a 10 out of 10 expert uh, in an, in the Middle Eastern world of either city. We. We eat a lot of Asian food. So uh, in downtown Toronto, because I didn't spend as much time in Markham this trip, uh, but Markham's always, food is always good, right? In Chinatown, I felt like that there was a lot more, uh, first of all, Chinatown is actually pretty big in downtown Toronto, I felt like. Oh, and it opened actually much yeah. later. And there it was a lot of spots late. open until like four or five Yeah, 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 because I also think it's safer. That's yeah. why things are open later. And then there's like a lot more like Hakka, Indo, Chinese food and Chiu Chow food restaurants. Are you talking about the mixture between da the Daisy world and the yes. Sino world? Yeah, which is like Toronto because Toronto has a lot of Chinese and a lot of 
brown Asians. Isn't Toronto like 20% Daisy and 15% Chinese? So South Asian, I think, make up a slightly higher percentage in Toronto. And then it's about 14 or 16% Chinese. Alone. Listen, guys, I'll just say this. If you're not used to seeing Indian and Chinese people and Indian and Chinese people also hang out together, go to Toronto yeah. because that, make it, that makes up like 40% of every single person you, you see anywhere. Yeah. Um, I do think there's not a lot of Korean food in the Chinatown. Most of the good Korean food you'll find is on Yonge Street over in North York, which is not that far. Uh, obviously, Markham for the Chinese community, all types of Chinese and that Indians. Would, that would and, be equivalent to yeah. more like flushing, but it doesn't look like flushing. It looks almost more like 626. Yeah. Almost more like a walnut diamond bar, Roland Heights, uh, yeah. Temple City thing. thing yeah. going on. And uh, obviously Cantonese being the single largest noticeable kind of singular group out there, David. So the Cantonese food is very good. Obviously Canada in general has a lot of Cantonese people uh, since a lot of them came over from Hong Kong. Um, and, and I think that that means that there's a lot of bars that kind of, or, or, or even the nightlife is different. Yeah, yeah, I would say it's a little different. Um, like nightlife, for example, let's just shout out to the spots. Midnight Market, Midnight Arcade, Big Trouble, all ran by Andrew. Uh, that's like, that's like, those are those are pretty cool spots. And I would say they mostly play hip hop. So I guess if you're into that, those are definitely spots you'd have to check out. Yeah, a lot of old school jams and uh, boom bap and everything. Just a good vibe. But they have a lot of other Asian spots that are kind of Asian mixed. AM, PM, easy on 5th, especially on Fridays. Obviously, the big EDM club is Rebel. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Rebel, personally. <laughs> uh, anytime anybody wants to go to Rebel, I'm like, yeah, 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 okay, me out. Um, so what is it? I mean, ultimately, we could go on forever, and I'm sure there's other people who could, you know, list it out. You know, but this is just, like, from immediately, like, our brain dump because right. we just got back. Andrew, is Toronto like New York City? If you made me say yes or no, I'm going to say no. It's not. It's not that much like New York City, but... It doesn't have to be. I think Toronto is an amazing city. It's very nice. I always have a good time there. I meet a lot of good people. Um, I connect well with the community out there. But I, I like, would not... It, it's probably the closest thing to New York and Canada, but coming straight from New York, I'm like, I don't know if it's like New York. Yeah. Like, not I, fully. I, I, I would say it's below 50%, so I'm just going to say no. Yeah. Although, it, it, yeah, it shares some similarities. I mean, isn't I mean, the truth that everything is relative to your, like own spectrum as an individual and right. what you've seen in your life. I'm thinking if you come from Calgary, Canada, Andrew, like more like the countryside and you move to Toronto, that's like going to like Tokyo, London. Mm. But then if you're from like New York city, moving to Toronto, you, it might feel like you're moving to almost like the suburbs. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's all relative to like what you set as your like baseline yeah. default for like what is normal. I mean, I mean, right? why David, why does it have to be the New York city? Why do you want to compare it to New York? I, so I don't much? think you would want to, to be it's, honest. Like I really enjoyed sort of the French Scandinavian, you know what I mean? Cause I, I'm assuming that there's more French and Scandinavian influence just due to the history of Canada to yeah. structurally, culturally, like you said, to the, your point, the breads taste better. Scando Franco, yeah. Yeah, Scando okay. Franco. So, so you're, you're like, no, keep, keep Toronto, Toronto. It doesn't have to be New York City. I don't think so. No, Why? no, no. I New mean, York is New York. Come to the, I know people from Toronto right now who are like, yo, I got to go to New York. It's a big city. It's, New York, I'll tell you this, man. New York is crazy. You got to come prepared here, okay? Yeah, I mean, I would tell anybody to go check it out. I think Toronto is like is really really cool. I mean, let us know what you think in the comments section below. We probably didn't even get to like one fifth of what we could have mm -hmm. talked about, you know. But immediately, that's just like what comes off the top of mind. I, you know, I didn't I didn't have any bag milk while I was there. Did you? Bag milk? No, nah, I didn't even see it. But I don't know if that's going out of style more. If that's just a certain group of people that more eat it. But I don't I don't think that's really in the. Uh, I, I noticed that like maple syrup things were not as big as. I remember. I don't know if that was just like in my youth. I feel I like remember. I, I think Canada's changing, bro, because they even have like this new version of Tim Hortons, like Tim Hortons 2.0, where you can get matcha and matcha donuts right, and right, matcha right. yuzu donuts. Like, but they look different though. It's yeah. almost like a Starbucks reserve. I, I mean, if you think about it, America's kind of like the NBA. Okay, it is the top league for almost anything. It also, or the NFL versus the yeah, CFL, yeah, right? It's also a crazy country, but it has some really innovative stuff here. So if that's what you're striving for is to make it in the most competitive possible market, yeah, New York is it. But I'll say this, man. I got a breather in Toronto. We enjoyed ourselves. The community is nice out there. The food's pretty good out there. Uh, it's just a nice break. And so I could see, I mean, would you potentially live in Toronto in the future, David. This is a good test because you know, you love New York, 
But would you ever live in Toronto? I would live in Toronto for a full year. Wow, just one. And if you stay there a year, you might stay there another. It's possible. Because, I mean, I think at the end of the day, guys, everybody wants to go to a place that's like in its golden moment. You know, I mean, I'm sure that that, that varies on everybody's lens. Oh, that's a good point. Everybody is like a, a different camera body juxtaposed with a different lens. If you guys know anything about cameras, the lens matters, the camera body cap matters, even the add-ons, the ND filters, the polarizers. I mean, but just for me, the way I'm viewing it right now, I like where T-Dot's at. <laughs> you like the energy in T-Dot. I like it a you lot, like man. Their, you think there's some momentum there. I think they, it's really cool what they got going on. Again, shout out to CCYAA. Shout out to everybody, Yo, man. shout out to the Google Pixel 7 Pro. Yeah. Bring up the bag. Sh- Bring shout out the to, ball. you Bring know, a, man. Give me the ball. Shout out to, yeah, like you said, the Google Pixel 7 Pro. Shout out to Simu. Shout out to Jeremy. Yeah. Cool. Shout out to everybody, You know man. what? You know what? I, I think uh, the, the fact that the CCYA Celeb Classic game is held there and it's such a big event, I think it, it says something about the Asian community up there. I'm just saying. Yeah, it's nice. Let us Check know what it you, out. Let us know what you think about uh, Toronto, and if you don't have any thoughts about Toronto in the comment section below, let us know what you think about Canada in general. I'm sure there's pros and cons. Like somebody told me, Amazon's like kind of slow and more expensive there, like Amazon Prime. You know, maybe maybe you but, don't. But, need- but maybe it's also less consumeristic. So if you don't like being sold something or buying something every five seconds, you know, like I said, maybe every pro has need- a con. Everything's like. Always, you know, like, and it depends on how you interface or how you prioritize pros and cons. Maybe you don't need same-day delivery. Maybe. Maybe you don't. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching the Hot Pop Boys, and until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.